I've uh, been doing some stuff at the Stronghold, just about to finish up, and doing some equipment stuff off uh, stream. Let me show you really quickly for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing. The Inquisitor has uh, traded in his robe for a pirate suit. I forgot about these, and uh, when I remembered, I said, oh, I gotta go pick them up. They were pretty good. And uh, I picked them up without thinking, and now it's like too late because I, I have them already. But they do have built-in deflection. Fortitude, it's too bad you can't like remove things. They, they are pretty good. The only issue is uh, I don't think I think it's, yeah, it's 12 out of 14. I can only go up to Superb. I won't be able to go up to Legendary. Still, it is armor that should take me through most of the game. As you can probably hear with my voice, I'm feeling much better. The migraine is now back down to, I would say, you know, 30, 40% of its normal pain level. I can't believe I'm using the word normal and migraine in the same sentence, but that has, it's what my life has fucking become. So... So, so that's it for my power gaming. I do all my power gaming off stream because if I didn't, there would be literally hours of me reading and uh, equipping my characters. And for example, like one example of power gaming, I had a bunch of stuff that was suppressed, right? So I just optimized all my characters, all of them, so that they all had, nobody has major suppressed, you know, uh, items anymore. I fixed it all. So... That took me about 30 minutes. Then I went to the vendors and I started buying stuff. And I was like, I need this, 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 and this. And uh, now I'm out of money again. That shouldn't be a big surprise. Hey, son, Nif, how are you? It feels good not to be in so much pain. I'll tell you that. Uh, God, I fucking hate migraines. Okay, sometimes I, I, I... Most of the time I make an effort not to bring them up on stream. But if you're watching the VOD or you're watching right now... I fucking, son, if you know, you know what I'm talking about because you suffer too. Chronic pain fucking sucks. It fucking sucks, dude. So anyway, that being said, oh, more, more stuff for me. Um, That being said, apparently we have a messenger waiting for us somewhere in here. It's supposed to be somewhere in here. We're going to speak with him before we go to Heritage Hill. Talk to the steward. She has a... Oh! The steward is... It's the throne, that's right. My lord, you've received a letter. Delivered with some urgency as it happens. I thought the messenger might swoon, poor dear. Listen, Dark Leaves. It's from Stalwart. Apparently the mayor, Renengild has heard of your success here at Cadnua, and hopes you can be of aid to her people as well. It's a long way for a letter. Yeah, I don't know that, but apparently I do know that. People like you come few and far between. And in this case, I believe Renengild is correct in suggesting that your experiences here may give you an edge. What? It seems she's intent on gaining access to Durgan's battery. <laughs> And she's offering quite the reward to anyone who can get inside. A reward, she says, for getting into the battery. <laughs> That's a reward of its own, surely. Okay, Durgan's battery? As in the source of Durgan steel? Oh my god! What is this? What, what is Durgan's battery? Dwar the dwarves oh. of the battery fashion Durgan steel, and with it they crafted the finest arms and armor the Deerwood has ever known. But the keep has been abandoned for centuries, and none remain that know their secrets. Okay. There are many legends concerning the battery. As the Earl told it, the dwarves fought amongst themselves, each seeking to use the battery to further his or her own ambitions. Before I continue further, Dark Leaves, hope you're doing well, bud. And uh, I'm not taking Sil's advice. Greed and cruelty brought down the battery, and now the spirits of those same dwarves roam the halls. <coughs> Whatever happened, the battery has been impenetrable ever since. A shame. I don't doubt that there are great treasures still within those halls. I do enjoy vast amounts of wealth, so I can equip my party. Pelagina says, I'm sure the wonders of, bat of the battery are a marvel to behold. 
But if the passes through White Mart were open again, it would be a boon to the merchants of the Republics, and the Deerwood, of course. I should mention that, among those rumored to have answered Renningild's summons, is a certain group I believe you may have an interest in. Uh, really? Followers of Woodaka, intent on reaching Stalwart and the Battery. I do not know what they seek there, but I thought it worth mentioning, given your interest in the ruins at Defiance Bay. Now that I've delivered Renningild's message, there is also a local matter of some concern, my lord. A mercenary band has been sighted to the northeast. I believe they mean to take Consul Hot's tower, and I don't expect the Archmage will go quietly. Consul Hot's one of the greatest wizards of our generation! I love fidgets and flutters, vacillating between anxiety and excitement. He appears to be at a loss for words. The Torn Bannermen are a deadly fighting force, and Consul Hot himself has sent many travelers to their graves. I would caution you to stay clear of the region if you do travel to the White March. It is not that I doubt your courage, my lord, but Consul Hot alone boasts power of a different scale altogether to those foes you have faced thus far. Given more time, perhaps, you will match him. If the Bannermen succeed in their efforts, I fear they may turn their attention to Cadnua. I will keep you apprised of the situation, my lord. Well, Consul Hout. A feigned archmage. I am given to understand that the Brackenberry Sanitarium puts much stock in his work, as regards the manipulation of the soul. His spells are widely circulated. Yeah, most of his spells suck. But he is poorly regarded in many circles. Some call him a madman, or else cruel and barbarous. He must be very old by now. Perhaps that is why the Torn Bannermen believe they can best him. Little enough, I'm afraid. The Torn Bannermen are well supplied and well organized, and there are rumors that they are backed by an unknown benefactor. They have proved remarkably effective in the past, and they are certainly a threat now. Safe travels, my lord. Okay. Journey will take several days. Okay, well, let's do Heritage Hill. Sure, the safety of Kate Nua. Northeast of Kate Nua's Swamopla. Oh, look, now it's available. So that's the Archmage. And apparently the statue doesn't think I can take him. You know what? I'm going to go do Heritage Hill, and then I'm going to prove this stupid statue wrong. I can take him. This party's... This party can handle an Archmage. I think. I'm pretty sure. Last thing the deer would need is another foreign colony. Oof. Talk about FPS murder here. Not sure what's going on. Okay, so we wanted to go to Heritage Hill. Oh, that's better. Um, quest updated Undying Heritage. Okay. Glass tree completed. Okay. What do the glittering gauntlets do? Ooh, those are good. What's dazzling? Nice. Uh, I'm going to run because apparently I've got to go use the bathroom. I'm going to run and do that really quickly. I will be right back. And then we shall purge the heritage hill.
Okie doke. Back. Hmm. The hell? Oh. Man, I don't know. I should use resting a little bit more. I mean, then I'd spend more spells. The fight's already super easy right now. Alright, Akanta. You return. I saw you. This time? I saw you in a vision. There's something you need to do for me. She laughs again. Believe me, I've heard that line before. It's rude to stare, you know. Oh. Okay, no. I guess she's not going to do anything for me, so visiting her was pointless. We'll just go straight into the tower. I believe that's what that vision told me. But I can go straight in, and I am curious as to what's in there. Speak the words you learn from the Leaden Key Acolyte. Hello? 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 Like just a bunch of ghouls. Oh, she jingles. I wish you no harm. Wow. Nice hit. <laughs> Holy mother. Tarkul, skeletal wizard. It's one big ass wizard. Ciphers are awesome. I'm here. Easy now. All times journal. Like a study, we're none the wiser. Okay.
yell at the wizard. Right, let's wipe out the wizard and then we'll deal with the rest of them. I really like this, uh, this chanter ability, the, uh, Paralyze and Stuck. Oh, it's so powerful. Mind feels <laughs> Yes. I mean, he tells me Trindig is uh, no longer amongst the living. I'll die too, for that matter. Wonder what happened here. this hmm. your thoughts must flow deeply indeed yes how may i help yes i'm ready hmm your thoughts must flow deeply, indeed. My mind feels sharp as steel. No, Palagina, what are you doing? Shit. How bad?
I shall be quiet as a calm sea, which is not very quiet. This reminds me of the thing at the beginning of the game. Oh, there were more down here. Oh well, they won't last long. Onward. Yeah, my bad. I'm here. The better part of valor. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> oh man. What a bitch. Uh that that letter's uh Kanta basically telling him, Fuck you, I'm never gonna help you. I I'm I'm gonna sit here enjoying your pain because you can't figure out what to do in there. Fuck you. <laughs> That's the message. It's terrible, man. It's also hilarious, but this is pretty terrible. I think you already have something buffing your intellect. What about Kena? Pretty sure you already have something buffing your intellect. Yeah, your stupid hat. I could get rid of your hat, though. And and you'll actually look, you know, more dapper now. Although, your rings are serving a purpose. So, that's probably not smart. Uh... Ah, whatever. You'll just have to keep your goddamn turban yes. on. For now. The better part of valor. Alright, up the steps we go. So far it, you know... Fairly uh, nondescript tower with a gigantic machine in the middle of it that appears to span multiple floors. And we are already at the top. Cool. So let's try this configuration. There's still nothing. I confound a device. Uh, hello, all time. Helm. A man hunches over the strange mechanism. His spine is sharp ridge rising from his arched back. He bar He's barely clothed in filthy rags, and the patches of skin you see are mottled green. A spoiled stench emanates from him. He's so intent on his work that he doesn't even notice you until your shadow falls over him. When he turns and sees you, he snarls and scuttles behind the Adra pedestal. Only his bared teeth seem to have escaped decay. His, his eyes are both yellowed and bloodshot. They do, however, flicker with intelligence. He averts his gaze and holds a hand in front of his face. Shouldn't be here. What do you want? Uh, what happened here? Call him? That's what I'm trying to figure out. He smashes a fist into the Yadra pillar. His hand makes a crunching noise, but doesn't bleed. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> yes, yes. Do better work, Aldheim slave thing. Research. We 
came to do research on the tower. Some commission from God hardly matters now. Given the catastrophe that followed, the commission in your research might matter a great deal. Where happened? I just need you to give me the facts, please. Yep. Something happened on our 11th night. Lights in the sky and a static charge in the air. But we were so careful. We were staying in the chambers below. Trinded, my assistant, said he saw a robed figure lurking around the tower. Wore a mask. Carried knives at his sides. A trick of shadows. They told me. The next morning, we felt strange. Like we hadn't eaten in weeks. So dazed that we didn't at first notice the blood around our beds. The strange wounds that had appeared overnight. And the machine. This cursed spire. Dormant for 2,000 years. Lifeless through hundreds of our experiments. And we woke that morning to find it spinning on its own. On its own! How can we stop what we couldn't start? As exciting as the prospect of a living machine may be, I suspect that, given mention of a machine and a mass figure both, there's another explanation. Years I've been doing this. Years. I know how these things work. But I, I don't know... All this happened. I know where to go. That's the problem. Their souls are trapped here like flies in a jar, clinging to rotting meat. Slow down. What does this machine have to do with souls? No time to slow down. But I, I can explain. Hold a magnet over iron splinters and they stick. Yes. Rub your hand over wheel wool and the hair of your head will follow it. So it is with this machine. He looks at you and runs his tongue along the edges of his fine, strong teeth. He quickly looks away. It has the power to manipulate souls, but why? For what? And how many others lie buried in the ruins of Air Block Love? No. Focus on this one. It's imprisoned our souls in our bodies. Cut the root between essence and flesh. Left a dwindling soul stuck in a shriveling husk. There's a stranger in the tower the night this happened? I didn't see him. My assistant, he saw him. He laughed. Said he was spooked by the cemetery. Perhaps it was already too late. I don't know what he did. But by morning, the machine was on, and we were slain. People were already on the streets, complaining of neighbors and family members acting strangely. I have a theory about this machine I will share. Scuttle is, it is a good word. I like it. You can almost hear all the legs fidget when they, when you say scuttle. Oh. I just, I, as soon as uh, his introduction was read, I, I just had this image of Gollum in my mind. So, you're not like the gulls in the street. Not yet. Not yet? But I will be. My body is dead. My soul, imprisoned in this corpse, only makes it seem otherwise. And as the body decays... I have to raise the volume of the voice. I can barely hear it myself. I hope you guys can hear it clearly. But the hunger... The only way to forestall the process is through a regular infusion of essence. Living flesh is the only ready supply. Yeah, that's not on the menu all the time. Or Aldhelm. I'm not proud of any of it. Hunting men and women in the early days of the affliction. Picking off soldiers that came to investigate. But I'd do it again. I'll do it as long as I must to end this disaster. You could help. Help me end this. Help me find sustenance. Yeah, what happened to the rest of your team? Did you eat them, bro? By the time I realized what had happened, the district had already been asleep. Yeah. So we fed when we needed, and 
locked ourselves in the tower to work. And then there came a time when the hunger struck. And there was hardly anyone left. Yep, I figured. So, uh, how can I help you? Not your help I need. It's Herodin. Runes. The runes are the last part of the puzzle. Ekantha knows them. She gives them to you, then you can turn the machine off. Release our souls. Wait, runes? The Inguithin runes? She can read them? He speaks of this feat so blandly. Let's talk instead to this Haradin, number one new Ben A. I pick her thoughts for a time. She wasn't here the night the machine came on, staying with her patron somewhere near. Too good to be burdened with our ignorant company. If Acantha knows the control words, then I don't see why I need your help. Th that's true, but I don't want to tell him that. I I'll just go get the words from Acantha. Yes. Acantha. She was here. In the district. Probably here still. Always prepared. Clever lady, that one. And perhaps... You'll bring me something. Something to keep me sharp. Then I show you a secret about the machine. Something to make you strong. Durance says this is an animancer in his natural state, Watcher. Never has he respected the sanctity of God's creation. Only now, he no longer has the cunning to hide it. He should be put down like the sick animal he is. Although not without first putting his spirit to the flame's test. <laughs> Durance, you psychopath. Hmm? Hey. He's not wrong, though. Indeed. Alright, well, let's get out of here and go talk with Kanta. That's for Old Helm. Sorry, buddy. I don't care what secret you have. I ain't bringing you flesh to eat. Seat to the bottom. So my theory is that this is this thing is what's eating the souls uh everybody's it's what's fucking everything up it's it's causing the hollowborn it's not just this one there was one at uh at salant Liss, right and i could have sworn the guy activated the machine but then again the hollowborn have been happening i guess before that so i don't know all I know is this is not good. These machines are not good. They're doing something to souls. I suspect they're linked to the Hollowborn, but I can't prove it right now. If they're not, then... I mean, look at them. They look like fucking centrifuges. I, I feel like they're just gathering souls, but for what purpose? I don't know. That's literally what they... When I look at them, I'm like, well, I need just described it as a magnet. Anyway, we'll see. My latest theory um, was wrong. Let's see if this one's wrong too. Could be right though. You never know. That's what I would write. I, I, that's how I would write the story. I think. So I would make it so that the souls are being funneled into those giant things and the power is being used for something nefarious. I don't know what. But that would be it. Be kind of cool if uh, it actually wasn't Wodaka that those guys were serving, but they were trying to bring back uh, Aethus instead by stealing souls to, you like, you know. What I need the words the that operate the Ingwithin machine in the tower. Survive. That's 
simpleton thinks he can understand how to use something without understanding what it is, or why it is. You feel a hot core of pride smoldering at the center of her soul. <laughs> he dabbles with ancient and powerful devices with all the finesse of a blacksmith. He sends you here to petition me for aid after years of disparaging my research. I bet he didn't even tell you the tower's name, did he? That's his problem. Always looking for solutions without caring for me. What is the tower's name? Termina. It's called Termina. They built a machine atop it to contain souls. <laughs> Hold them in place. Boom, theory but confirmed. Machines scattered all over the deer wood. Arenas. Built to move souls. Boom! Theory confirmed, yo. Okay, so where would they move the souls then? Another mystery. Hypothetically, anyone who wished. The real question, as always, is why? To intermix them the way a player shuffles his deck? The way a farmer rotates his fields? To collect them like butterflies under glass? To melt them down for raw essence? How do you operate the machine? I don't know. How do you operate the machine atop Terra Noneth? Back to these tinkers' concerns. And what would you do with these tethered souls if I told you? I'd release them. So you say. And just what would you release them to? They'd abandon their existence here for another somewhere else. Equally aimless and meaningless. I could help you, but I won't. The pride lodged in her soul flares up, twisting into the shape of something that writhes and squeals within her. Here, I have specimens aplenty and time enough to observe them all. It's every scientist's dream. My answer is no. What? But what good is observing all this if you're going to hoard it for yourself? Tell her, number one noob and A. An entire language at your fingertips and she hides it away? You're dead. Why does any of this matter to you? Because my research will outlive me. I'll have time and opportunity enough to accomplish more than any Animancer in the history of the field. And who's going to know about it? The pride thing flickers as the flames around it abate. All I've learned, years of studying the Inguithan language. No one understands it better than me. That counts for something. No, actually, it doesn't. Knowledge is meaningless unless, unless it is shared. It, it truly is. If I were to know everything and I didn't share it with anyone, then I wouldn't even exist. A foolish and false statement. Knowledge is meaning. It needs no external purpose. It's incredibly selfish, but uh, the opportunities here are finite. One day that knowledge will die with you. That's true. The pride hisses and sputters. It's little more than an ember now. You're wrong. But there is no conviction in her voice. I'll build it forever. I'll cling to it. That'll give me something. Teach me what you know, and I'll make sure that it grows, and your legacy lives on then. Your words finally quench her pride, and all that remains is a blackened, diamond-hard rock. You cast it away, where it melts into the darkness. So be it. My studies and efforts shall grow through yours. These are the words you need. Her cold, dry fingertips rest on your temples, and suddenly you feel her reaching into your mind. Images form from the darkness. Runes flash through your head, but they're no longer just pictures. They have meaning, and you understand them. They are commands. Something else triggers in your mind. A distant memory unearthed from a past life long since buried. You can see a vast array of runes, far more than Ekantha has shown you. And you know what they are, their sound, their meaning, and how they all fit together. The entire language of Engwith once more at your command. Something has awakened in your mind. You understand far more than I ever will. Take this knowledge then. And do what you will with Ter Mina. Now that you understand its purpose, it will serve you in whatever way you wish. The speaker of dead tongues now! 
and so he surpasses a hundred frustrated scholars in a matter of a few moments. I don't suppose you could look at a few books for me. No, Kana, no I couldn't. Leave me alone. Explain how the control words work. Harnessing the power of Terra Nuneth is about understanding what it was designed to do. You know the words and their meanings. You can speak them. The tower shall obey. And... Hmm. Why would the Aguithans have wanted to move souls? Okay, that I already asked. And did I already ask, remind me, how do you know so much about the tower? Yes, okay. Hey, yeah. Excuse me. Okay, so what do I do with the tower now that I know these words? Turn it off, I expect. That will be easy now that you can read the runes. The vessels would still roam, but striking them down would return their essence to the site. But be careful. That machine controls hundreds of souls. And that volume of essence could easily overload it. Improperly channeling the essence would destroy the machine along with the souls. It would be a terrible loss for posterity. Yeah, I agree with you, Grieving Mother. We got to free those souls. I don't believe in slavery of any form. And uh, a machine that enslaves the hypothetical soul to everlasting use. I don't know what the use is, but everlasting use uh, is, uh, is it's pretty fucked up and will be stopped by my hand. By my real souls, be free. Be free. Fly forth. Oh, that's right. Before I forget... Let's raise the voice volume up. I'd say 10% should do it. I'm ready. Mm. Hi, I'm here. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Indeed. All right, Aldhelm. Aldhelm looks much worse than before. His rotten flesh hangs loosely, and sores have eaten away patches of skin at his joints. He looks at you with a strange glimmer in his eyes. Flesh. He takes a... He takes a tentative, scuttling step towards you, then doubles over, coughing up strings of black bile. He seems to have forgotten about you for the moment. Oh well. If I want his help, I'll need to send a victim to him. No, no, I don't want his help then. Throttling the device. Maximize the machine's throttle in hope of overloading the device. Choose end. As the command words leave your lip, your lips, the dial sinks into the Adra under your hand. Something like a thunderclap sounds overhead. The glow fades from the machine as it falls dormant. Still and silent. It's finally. Okay, I'm. I'm. It's fine. I should kill him, shouldn't I? I mean, he's. 
He's basically undead. So I've killed enough here. Oops. Oh, no. Oh, well, not a big deal. But uh, we did learn quite a bit. We learned that whatever these Igwithin thingies are, that they are basically soul traps. Seat to bottom. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Hello? Dunrid Row Messenger. Begging your pardons, huh? But I have a message for you. You are summoned to Hadrid House, while Lady Webb wishes to meet with ye as, as soon as possible. They say she's an ancient spider, spinning her nets throughout the city. He gives you a careful look. If she wishes to see you, that either bodes very well or very ill. How the hell did you know where to find me, yeah? Well, it's, it's Lady Webb. She knows everything. Tell me about Lady Webb, exactly. Tell me a little bit more about her. Do you not know Lady Webb? She's... Well, no one's seen her, exactly, in a long time. But she's the mistress, mistress of Dunrid Row. Has been for as long as anyone can remember. He pauses, eyeing passerbys with suspicion. What passerbys? Quietly, he continues. She's supposed to be old. Older than anybody. And she never leaves her room. Some say she's wasted away and she's just a pile of bones kept animated by dark magics. She's still at it, best anyone can tell. Learning things, keeping us safe, pulling the strings behind the throne too, it's said. Has a ring of ciphers doing her bidding, telling her everything that goes on. You do wrong in this country before you go asking the gods for forgiveness. Best you start with Lady Webb first. Okay. The tower! It's off! Does this mean the curse on Heritage Hill is lifted? Uh, it wasn't a curse, but yeah, the district is safe again. I think it'll be some time for anyone will be willing to settle in the district, but at least we can get started on restoring it. Alright, so that's done. Now the Hermit of Hadrid House, Lady Webb, wants to talk to me something to do in Deerford Village and I have to find a place of misery and madness um, clearly that's Brackenbury Sanitarium and we'll get, we're gonna go there right away curious and apparently that's the same place we need to go for Aloth so two birds Van Stonia mm -hmm. I do want to check Andre's gift for the vendors just to see if there's anything I had wanted to buy and put it down on the list. I still don't have excess money to be able to afford some of the other stuff on my shopping list here, but I will eventually. I'm pretty sure it was the salty mast. There's this extraordinary gentleman's club. No, we stick together. There's also the dude that's here. I don't remember if he sells anything. Shh. 
shit, he has a sapphire. Uh, and diamonds. I need those for crafting. It's expensive shit, though. I don't think I want to spend the money on that just now. So let's jump into... Let's jump into the tavern and go see the, uh... The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and Gentle Ladies. Gentle gendered. Hello. Huh. That is pretty good. Jesus. All these unique weapons are just fine weapons. Well, some of them are fine. Otherwise, some are exceptional. They're, they're not... There's there's nothing in here that I can't make myself. At least that's what I'm understanding. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I don't see anything special about this. Darkosi Paladini's longsword of Inclane, for example, is an exceptional longsword. That's it. So I don't need anything in here. Too bad. I, well, hold on. Okay. All right. Uh. Okay. So. Those two may, but that's that's like a really big maybe. I don't I don't think so. I don't think I need anything in this shop. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm good. Anything worth stealing in here? Nope. Well, we don't need to worry about this place ever again. Looks like they replaced that woman with somebody else. Sorrel's been replaced with a... Uh, their next best prostitute. Which happens to be a man. I can check the Valian Trading Company. The only thing I'm really interested in purchasing anyway are boots or special hats or armor that I can enchant but already comes built in with stuff that I cannot enchant. What I've noticed is in enchanting, you can't... Like, a lot of the 
stuff you find will come with these unique enchantments that you cannot add via crafting. Which is fine. You know, it actually annoyed me at the beginning. Now now it's fine. I don't I don't really care. But uh one of the things I really abhor is that you can't craft uh well met, friend. can't craft any special hats or anything like that. That that's unacceptable. Touch of the rot and spreading plague. Touch of rot. Uh huh. Spreading plague. That's actually pretty decent. But... Okay. Yeah, there's there's stuff in here I can buy easily. Let's see how much this will set me back. Twelve thousand. Okay, so we'll just just put it on the list. This is the Va Valian. This is an Andra's gift. And it's. Okay, I can afford at least. Oh, I can afford these two. Okay. Uh, what did this do again? Plus two resolve. So that'll be the only thing. Amulet of Jokate. Joe Pate, and the vendor is the Valian something or other. Greetings. Artugo, actually, is the name of the vendor. Okay. Done. Alright. Um, here, why don't you take some of my daggers off of me and the hatchets and that fine mace? I'm never going to use it. Okay, well, writing it down was pointless. I didn't realize I had so much to sell. Hail, traveler! Just go ahead and buy it. Okay. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is here. No. You already have intellect. Okay, prone reduction. Oh boy. Didn't think this through. He already has a DR bonus belt. That at least works. Institution of Might plus one and of Resolve. That, that'll work for her. As for the other one, the other two rings, I don't know who's going to use them now. Probably Kena, actually. Maybe not. Prone Reduction and Dexterity plus two. That would normally go for Durance, but... Now I don't know. I don't. I think he already has a boost to intellect. He does. So that's pointless. Let's give him this. Let's just give him this so he doesn't get knocked down for as long and. Damn. I guess I'll give this to Adair. Yeah. We'll save all of this for Dare and Sagani.
yes. All right, we're good. On pets. We are off to... Fuck, why is it so hot in here? Give me one second. I'm going to be right back. But we are off to... Um... Brain fart. <laughs> Brackenbury. Yeah, that, that's it. That's where we're going. Be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Yes? So the sanitarium's right here, and that's where we want to go. Good day to you. Ah, the Watcher. What brings you here? Do you know anything about Awakenings? There's an Anamancer on the lower floor who came all the way from Revua to study them. Take the stairs down and look for Bella Siege. Uh, you may have a member of the Leaden Key in your midst. Ethelmar groans and the statue around him shudders. I could have done without hearing that today. Many have their intrusions been into our affairs. Of course, one can seldom be certain whether they've meddled or whether a calamity has struck on its own. But a few of their less skilled infil infiltrators have been exposed from time to time. They are a perpetual nuisance. Once again, I am reminded of how envious I am of your gifts. I suspect they would be of some use in verifying one's identity. You are at odds with the leaden key as well, I take it. I'm up to something, and I'm trying to determine what. They are always up to something. Of that you may rest assured. If their plots have come to involve you, you have my sympathies. Do you have some idea of who this person might be? I think it would be unwise to consider anyone above suspicion. Very well. In that case, I'd recommend you speak first with our resident Anamancers. They have frequent interactions with both patients and colleagues. You'll find them up here and in their offices downstairs. You will report anything suspicious to me immediately. This is my only request. Alright, fair enough. How do you do? Jesus, what the hell is with my frames? Okay, maybe it was malware bites again. Sorry about this, guys. I just don't know why it's acting the way it is. This isn't a particularly memory intensive game. Or CPU intensive game at least hasn't been in the past although if my computer starts running other processes behind my back so to speak then that will happen here we go again
So I didn't read anything out loud for what she was saying, but I will because it looks like this is... I've, I've spoken to her before, so I just figured I wasn't going to get anything new. I figured incorrectly. Nance regards you with bright, intelligent eyes. Can I help you with something? What do you know about Awakenings? Not much, I'm afraid. But the sanitarium attracts experts from all over. I'm sure somebody here can help you out. And what do you do here? I'm an animancer. Used to venture on all kinds of underfunded and ill-fated trips out of the expedition hall when I was your age. But lately, I found research better suited to my current pace. She pats a creaking knee and laughs. I'd like to know more about the sanitarium. It's the official center of animancy in Defiance Bay, founded in 2729. And before you get saucy, no, I wasn't around at the time. It was built to treat ailments of the mind and soul. Important sort of place to have in a growing city, and its construction marked the end of the animancy slowdown that followed the Bale Reach accident. Bale Reach accident? She shakes her head. A terrible setback for the discipline. A researcher working outside the Bale Marsh shattered the souls shattered the souls of a dozen volunteers. Her voice lowers to a growl. Of course, we'll never know exactly what went wrong, because the mob tore him to pieces. This mishap bears some of the blame for the slower pace of research in the two and a half decades that followed. It did also help concentrate practicing Athamancers here in Defiance Bay, though. I'm investigating possible leaden key activity in the sanitarium. Seen anything suspicious? Oh, um, I'm afraid I'm too wrapped up in my own research to pay any mind to what anyone else is doing. One of the other Animancers might know something, though. I mean, mm -hmm. who's going to tell me outright, hey, yeah, I'm a... Uh... I'm a spy. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm a spy, and uh, that's what I've been doing. Look at me. I'm a spy. Looking for an expert on awakenings, Bella Siege. She laughs bitterly. Bitterly. Ah, that would be me. Though the lack of research subjects has made me more of an expert in counting floorboards. I'd like to transfer any success in buttressing pre-awakened souls to soothing those whose souls have already awakened. But I need subjects. And most of the patients here are too broken. To produce reliable results. It is a tragedy to have come so far for nothing. You're in luck. I have a volunteer. I do? She springs to the ball of her feet. She springs to the balls of her feet, beaming. Yeah, lardy. Who is it? Aloth's lip curl lips curl into a frown. I don't know about this. She grins more broadly still. Don't be silly. The process is perfectly harmless. All you must do is stand in that cage. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon? I jest. You adherents are so uptight. I do not even know what the thing is used for. It belonged to the last occupant of the office, I think. Now they upgrade him to a cell. Again. I jest. She rubs her hands together, getting down to business. So... I need you to sit here. She takes Aloth by the shoulders and steers him to the couch. And try to relax. But don't try too hard. Then you will not be relaxing. <laughs> Indeed, his eyes are humorless. <laughs> and you must also wear these. A little cold. But the copper will help conduct your essence. The Animancer fastens thick copper bands to Aloth's forehead and his wrists. As she ratchets them to tighter, his face twitches with suppressed irritation. Now, I will examine your soul through my scope. She reaches into her desk and produces a long chambered tube. Knobs, dials, and small toothed wheels run alongside, alongside of the device. It is fitted with Audra lenses, cut to different thicknesses and concavities. I'm switching voices for her. I'm going full, full Cleo. She's going to read his soul. Read his fortune. By manipulating them, 
I find angles and densities that would allow me to track the anomalies in your soul. How exciting. I've never seen this sort of thing performed. Kane appears at the device with interest. It seems suitably complicated. The grieving mother says, His mind is full of hesitations. Angles upon angles. Drawing him out of his own fears will be difficult. She raises a finger. But first, we must make sure... We must find this cunning interloper. You will answer some personal questions while I make adjustments. Good luck. You'd have an easier time getting straight answers out of a drunk priest of whale. Alaw squirms on the couch. Very well. She holds the scope to her eye and flicks a knob. To begin, tell me something personal. Something from a time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. I was just a normal child living in the Kythwood. He looks to you. His face is set in a frown, but the rigid edges of apprehension show through, nonetheless. What do you remember about your home? As you speak to Aloth, you feel your voice like a bell in your chest. It tolls, softly, luring him into the mists of his own memory. Belisage doesn't seem to notice anything, but you feel as if your words are smoothing his essence untangling its many threads. He closes his eyes. Comfortable, modest, quiet when Mother is away, which is most of the time. Quiet enough to hear the clink of glass on wood. This is when I know to be most careful. Father is good about hiding the bottles. Mother, when she is home, is good at pretending not to notice them. This is good. I'm starting to see something. Continue. Tell us about the time you awakened. She bites her tongue as she twists one of the dials. I'm in the fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little, because when she's around, he's usually only angry with her. But he has heard that I have had trouble casting missiles. That my flame shields are unstable. He is furious that I have failed, and Mother's presence reminds him that he has failed too. The first blow takes me by surprise. One moment, I'm sweeping the kitchen. The next, I'm sprawled on the ground, stupidly looking at flecks of my blood on the tile. His boot glistening with fresh polish. His boots, rather, glistening with fresh polish, thud across the floor. He kicks me in the stomach and I curl up to shield my vitals. But it's pointless. Protecting one thing only leaves something else exposed. Still huddled, huddled on the ground, I retreat as fast as I can. I retreat until the vision of the kitchen and my own trembling knees are nothing but a pinprick against a field of black. His jaws lock. His jaw locks, and his eyes twitch beneath their lids. Matiko! Bella Sage furiously cranks the knob knobs along her scope. He's hypnotized himself with his old memory. You got to bring him out of it. Quickly! I must have it! Squeeze Alas' hands. Squeeze Alas' hand. You're safe. Everything's fine. Alas' eyes snap open, but the expression you see in them isn't his. He is ne'er safe when I hap upon him. All right. Bella Siege sucks a deep breath through her teeth. That's it, man! I'm seeing a shift in his essence. Something spreading and congealing. She glances at you over her scope. Keep talking. Him seem to respond to you. What What brought you here? Breaking bones and violence high in ire. That warm molasses feeling that creeps down your gut when crisis is nigh. That's different. Perfetto! We have flares of a totally distinct essence! She jots shorthand notes onto the page next to her, and turns one clicking knob of her scope. Now, try to get the two of them talking together! Isilmir, tell Aloth why you've awakened. Fie! He's the one needed me, hiding in his own bone bag like a turtle in its shell. Aloth's face twists in fury. I never turned it over to you. Good, yes. Very good, man. 
She rests from her scribbling, only to make another adjustment to her scope. I can now see two separate pattern of essence, where he ebbs, the other flows. It's as if the awakened soul feels the spaces that he leaves empty, man. She prompts you with a circling of her wrist, quill still in hand. Go on now, go on. Aloth, um, what is this about seeding space to Zilmir? He greets, grits his teeth painfully. I've given her nothing. She usurps me in my own body. Aye, and I lend him a pair too. You should ask him. You should ask what I did that old man of his. How the last time he laid a hand on us. I break it in three places. Oh my god, is this Jamaican? As well? Or Caribbean? Aloth's head jerks to the side. That wasn't your decision. It's never been your decision. Now I was awakening. But now I'm stuck with ye, and damned if I let your ninnying drag us both through the scupper. Ah, very good, man. She lowers her scope and consults her notes. I think I've finally got something we can work with. Attract Desilmir's essence throughout the exchange. She had a particularly high density index during the most heated portions of them argument, and her essence seemed to localize most clearly in the lower portion of the subject left ribcage. That's right, around the spleen, which of course means that she has triggered by black bile. That no doubt is the subject's characteristic. That means melancholy is to blame. Jesus, this is Cleo. This is Cleo. She's telling his fortune right now. This is hilarious. Aloth blinks back at you, and in the midst of his perturbation, you're not quite sure who's looking out of his eyes. That's utter horseshit. <laughs> black bile, is it? They've certainly spat their share. Kana studies Aloth dubiously. It is, it is a simpler explanation than I expected, all things considered. She glares at him. Yes, never mind me years of training. I suppose you have a better explanation. You're close. I think Isomir's appearances are related to potential sources of trouble for Aloth. Belisage carefully scratches her jaw. Her gaze darting between you and Aloth. I... I suppose that could be true. She jots another note. I'll have to check this against other research. Aloth removes the copper bands. Well, and good for you, but what does this mean for me? Belisage frowns at her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill and making a grand show of concentration. However, you catch her stealing a glance at you over the pages. So, what are my choices here? Izumir tries to take control from you, and she thinks you cannot face a problem on your own. Yeah, exactly. You can't let other people make decisions for you. Or let me rephrase that. You can, but it's... Usually, it ends poorly. My thoughts exactly. I'll have to be more careful about her from now on. I've got a lot to process. Regardless, thank you for your help, number one new Ben, eh? He does not look at Bella Siege. She sets her notes on her desk and returns to her scope. Well, I hope this has been you as useful to you as it has been to me. I finally have material worth publishing. You'll be the toast of Revua Fintrialat. His grimace melts into a crooked smile. Aye, advancing the right wise principles of animancy. Just what you've always wanted. As you turn to leave, you catch a darting movement out of the corner of your eye. Bella Siege is humming to herself, still occupied with her scope, but Aloth is holding her notes. He's just about to tuck them into his cloak when he catches you watching. He holds a finger to his lips, his eyes wide and imploring. Please, I don't want my personal information public like this, published like this, especially not after her nonsense. Yeah, I I mean the deal was she she helped you and you give her the research, man. You get your explanation and she gets her research. That was the deal. He slides the papers back onto the desk, giving you a rueful look. I'm now gonna help you explain this one, scholar boy. Okay, yeah, Aloth. Yes? You make a deal, you gotta live by the the letter of the deal. Sorry, brother. That was funny. 
Well met, friend. Looking for an expert on awakenings. I hear that Valian woman studies them. Should go talk to her instead. Has anything unusual been happening around here? You must be joking. This is the sanitarium. Nothing is usual down here. He pauses. Although now that I think of it, the patients seem more agitated lately. But they're Cademan, As Cademan Azo's, Azo's responsibility, not mine. Alright. Gods keep you. A young Orlan woman traces her finger along the spines of the books in front of her, row by row, her motions quick and skittish, like a bird's. She does not notice you until you are nearly upon her. Oh my, you startled me. Are you supposed to be in here? Uh, what are you doing in here? I mostly help, help Master Azo set up and clean his equipment. I also keep his office organized since he's too busy to do it himself. There's nothing else. I need to get back to work. I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. Me? I'm just Master Azo's assistant. But there's a visiting scholar from Ravua here named Belasish. She claims to know about them. I'm investigating any suspicious activity in the sanitarium. Oh, I'm just Mr. Azo's assistant. He'd know more about that. But he is in the middle of an exper- I mean, he's busy with some patients. You won't be able to see him until he comes out from the patient ward. Is he busy with patients or running an experiment? I'm just an assistant. It's not my place to gossip. I'm sorry. How do I get into the patient ward? Only Master Aso has access. I guess Head Warden Elthelmere does too. But he's, you know, a statue now. I see. Let's keep quiet. I'll give it a try, as requested. Damn. Yeah, he's been running some secret ass experiments, all right. All right, let's go upstairs and speak with the enchanter and get the key to this. Clearly, Cademan's a Cademan Aso is not a uh, good dude, and we're gonna undo his, his dark plans of experimentation. He's probably grafting the heads of patients onto different bodies and stuff. You can tell that kind of craziness. Well, I, with everything I've I've researched and read, I I almost understand a person's ability. First of all, I understand how people desensitize themselves, but I almost understand now a scientist's ability to desensitize himself so much that he's willing to destroy other people to achieve quote unquote science. I found records that Azo may be running some questionable experiments, man. Experiments? Kate Veneso is in charge of patient welfare now. He's not authorized to run any more experiments. I am disappointed in Cateman. I had hoped he would be the one to guide your inquiry. He'll be in his office or in the patient wards. I am granting you immediate access so you can find him. No doubt you will wish to speak to him further on this matter. And I, for one, am curious as to what he might say. Tread carefully. There are a few dangerous cases down there. I would ask also that you do your best not to agitate the patients. They have enough troubles as it is. I am so agitating the patients. We're going to break out of this fucking mental ward. Everybody. We're breaking out. Or I'm going to let them run free. Except for the serial murder soul. That one I'm not letting run free. That one's... That one's going to stay in the cage.
Curved spine twists this woman's posture forward. Her greasy hair draped over her large eyes like vines. She smiles at you. You must be visiting someone. Then noting your appearance, she adds, A friendly visit, I hope. Have any of the patients here been acting unusually? Well, there's Batiksa, who relieves a murder she committed more than five lifetimes ago. Eidelman, who says, who they say only has half a soul and was found collecting the faces of others because he believed his own to be a false one. Graham, he speaks in the language no one understands and wails at night sometimes. Different from their normal behaviors, I mean. Well, yes, I suppose, but nothing they didn't volunteer for. Master Aso let us know that a number of patients in the North Ward has volunteered for a new therapy and would be escorted to his laboratory to receive treatment. The North Ward has our most troubled cases. I'm glad some of them have chosen to get help. It seems to me it's gotten quieter over there since it started. Okay, can I visit the North Ward? Where, do, where can I find Aso? She's just like humans, even the very sick. It's too bad what they did to him. He hides it well, but I know he's still affected by it. Affected by what? Frail's eyes dart back and forth. Her voice lowers to just above a whisper. They don't like to talk... I'm not going to do the voice for her. They don't like to talk about it. But there was an accident. He was said to be one of the brightest in Deerwood. That was his reputation here, and... That was what brought me to seek treatment. People say it was Ego that drove him to try and solve the legacy. But that's hogwash, even if he was a bit of a showman. He loves his homeland. He thought he could help. He wasn't one to speak of his work. I suspected his colleagues might have tried to steal it. But he told me once that he had figured out a way to create a soul. Not a soul exactly, mind you. How did he put it? A proxy, I think had some machine that drew energy out of the very ether. Can you imagine? The point is, he was going to help with the legacy. He was going to make Holoborn into something easier to love and care for. Gods know, that's something we need. Do you know what they call those empty little babies in Andra's gift? Uh, no, but go ahead and tell me. They call them buoys. Because so many of them are found floating face down in the water. These are mad times. Grieving mother's hand fly to her ears, and her mouth frames a silent scream. Only her mind speaks. Evils that magnify tragedies. This is what we must stop. Anyway, Master Azo has scheduled a public demonstration of his work in Copper Lane. He was so excited. And then the next day, he was locked in his office. Turning away visitors, I heard. And he stopped seeing patients. I, I don't know exactly what happened, and I, I don't have the heart to ask him. I'm glad they're letting him treat people again. Where can I find Aitso? I think I've seen him around today. Have you checked the laboratory? He shares a wall with his office. He's been spending most of his time there lately. And why are you in here? Behind her hair, her cheeks flush. I don't want to say you'll think less of me. You can tell me I'm going crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't tease. No one in here can help what they are. I know. I've tried. These last few years haven't been kind to me. They haven't been kind to anyone, really. I try not to think of it as personal. I lost my husband and both boys in the Saints' War. My daughter, the legacy, took her before she was ever mine. I may do. What else can you do? I moved into a tiny place in Andra's gift. Got by mending clothes and on the kindness of strangers when I had to. But I was surviving, and the gods were watching over me. I could live with that. One day, though, this noblewoman comes in, wants this fancy gown fixed. Gorgeous thing. The shade of blue I'd never seen before. Only, I had. I looked at it, and it reminded me of something. I had what they call an, awa uh, an awakening. I remembered being a noblewoman myself in another life. People doting over me. Men doting over me. Me. The best food. The most beautiful home. All the things you never dare to dream of. They were mine. It was poison knowing that. All those things I had that I'll never have in this life. It did something to me. 
My food started to taste rotten. The walls in the little room seemed to close in around me, and I stopped being able to sleep. So I came here. Was that or break into an estate and start ordering servants around? It seemed like such a silly thing to worry about. You don't have to tell me. But I can't get past it. And I start to wonder, why did the gods choose this life for me? And if they did, what terrible thing must I have done to deserve it? Um, maybe you'll get there again one day, if not in this life, then another. Yeah, like, don't make it the focus of this life. Strange part is, I think even the best wouldn't be good enough for me anymore. I think it must have gotten to that point where I was that noble lady. It must have gotten to that point when I was that noble lady. Okay. Elise! Master Azo said he'd make me better soon. Oh, I hope so, Elise. You didn't... You didn't deserve that shit that happened to you. in that cell back there. We've had incidents when people get too close. Um, I mean, I can handle a bunch of whites. It's not a problem. Be cautious. Be constant. Alright, not really sure where, okay, this is the only place that's unexplored. Did I see anyone else in here to talk to aside from Frail? I don't think so. I'm supposed to look for a guy called Gorm or Graham or something of that nature. Oh, there's Aso. I can do that, as requested. Not too shabby, actually. Alright, I want to talk to him first. I want to talk to the patient first that he's experimenting on constantly. See if I can get any more information before speaking with him. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy yet. Could be that the patient is actually the... What's this? Oh, okay. I can't get to the northern ward, so I have to speak to him. Alright. 